how you doing there I'm gonna show you guys how to make a uh, template to make a square to round transition piece this can be used mainly in the sheet metal fabrication industry so again a square base to a round transition this is a finished product we'll go through the steps how I got here Try this. how about a seven inch base So middle of that is right there. I'll go with a six inch height. I'm going to draw this symmetrically. Let's go with a uh, five inch top. So that's going to be two and a half inches each way. And so that would be a side view of the transition piece I want to make. So again, the top would be round. The bottom will be square. So we'll go through the steps it's going to take to make a pattern for this. Okay, since I don't need to make a full pattern, I'm just going to make a half a pattern. Because this is a symmetrical thing, in other words, the top of the cone and the bottom of the base are aligned. It's not an offset. So one half of the pattern is going to be the same as the other half. So I'm just going to make half a pattern. I'm going to start by taking that 7 inches and drawn a base down here. Kind of a half a view. Now half a seven is three and a half inches. So I'm gonna come up here three and a half. And I'm gonna do the same thing, three and a half. Again, this will be an overhead view, but only half of that. So <clears throat> I'm gonna find the center top in the middle should be right here. And again, I have a five inch round, which is gonna be two and a half inches. I don't know if you can see it here, but I do have gridded paper. There's two and a half inches. Okay, so I'm gonna draw half this circle. Again, we're looking straight down on it. That's half the pat that's half the uh, pattern here. And to keep track of things, I'm going to give some point names. I'm going to call this point A, point B, C, and D. And as you saw in that pattern, I have square bottom. I'm going to divide this into equal segments up here. For the sake of layout. So by taking half my diameter, my radius, I can divide this into equal parts here. Okay, I'm going to give these numbers too. I'm going to start with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay, again, my top view of the plan. Okay, from here, again, my height over here on that thing up there is 6 inches. So, I am going to make... This will represent the height of my transition piece, six inches. Now, if we can, I need to envision. So if I go straight down out of the top of this piece and hit the bottom and come out here, I have certain lengths. So I'm going to represent those lengths on the bottom of the base. If in other words, from the base, if I come over and straight up to these points, I'm going to draw, draw that to um, 
transition some put some pieces here for my pattern so if I go straight down out of that cone to the bo bottom and over to the edge there I have that length there and again I'm gonna call that D1 and it's also you can see it's the same as C7 again we're going straight down and out straight down and out okay now I'm gonna do this length Okay, A2 and A3 and B5 and B6 are all going to be the same length. Again, this is symmetrical. So now, there we are. So I'm going to give that A2, A3, B5, and B6. Those are all going to be the same length. And finally, my length here which should be the same as that. So we're gonna go A1 and A4. So A1, A4, B4, and B7 are all the same lengths. And again, this represents the length from the top of my transition piece straight down to the base and out here like B5 would be that same length there. Okay, so that, that's going to help us get a pattern going. Okay, so I'm going to start again. The bottom of my base is 7 inches, so I'm going to start there with my pattern. So I'm going to go, here I go, 7 inches. Again, having this gridded paper is really a... A nice little feature the little grids in here keep, helps you keep everything square and safe so I'm gonna mark that point A point B now first thing I want to do is find this point four over here if you can see that way out here I'm trying to move my paper over there you can see this so again I'm gonna take that length a4 here what is the length of that? So, let's find that. And by swing an arc here and an arc up here, I'm going to find that point four up there. Again, they're equal distance. These are centered in that. Okay? So now. Okay, so I'm going to come over here with my compass. I'm going to find that exact length there. Make double check it. Everything's marking out. Now I'm going to swing arcs from here and swing an arc there. That represents the length of that circle, the top of that that's been divided. So now I'm going to find my points B, B5, B6, A3, A2. So back to here again. So finding that length there. Now I'm going to go by my B5 and my A3. Give those marks. 5 and 3. It's really nice to have two compasses for trans transferring these lengths here, but my other compass I don't like right now. So I'm going to strike an arc here, strike an arc here. Now I'm going to go back to go back and find this length again. Now I'm going to have B6 and A2.
And my last ones will be my... Again, these are all equal. Two. And... Okay, my B7 is my longest length over here or my A1 find that length there okay so there is the top half of the top of my round piece round top but I still have to find my point D and C out here so I'm move this paper so you can see a little bit hopefully get it all in here messing around with this camera angles as much work as this so I'm gonna take that length but I'm just gonna strike an arc because I don't know exactly the angle it's coming out so again these angles this length that's what we just did there okay so now I can find my length 1D or 7C. Let's find that length right here. So now I can go from point 1. Found that one. And that one. So that's my AD over here. And my B, C over here. I'm going to connect this one. Having trouble with my little drawing pencils here. I like the 0.5 millimeter pencils. They're just to have a little crisper point to them rather than the 0.7 millimeters. And then finally, you can do this by hand. You cut this with a pair of scissors. And there's half our pattern. And I like to make a little tab, connection tab on it. It doesn't have to be any exact size, but it just gives you something. By the time you roll this over, it gives you a little place to do it. Remember, this is half the pattern, too. Half the pattern. So here's a close-up of this thing. <clears throat> I was losing that thing off the uh, edge of the camera. So here's the completed half pattern. And again, it's from these lengths, which were taken from here. Trans again, these represent the top of the cone coming straight down and out to the sides from here coming straight down and then over to across the base there. So here's half the pattern. Give this a label C out here and this label D. So now I'm going to cut this out and remember half the pattern I'm going to cut it out then roll it over on itself to get a complete pattern. Or you could just cut one pattern out, trace it, do the second one. Especially if you're doing sheet metal, you probably want to do these in two pieces. Bending this, cutting out as one piece is kind of a hassle because you just have you just got a lot on your hands. Anyway, we'll go from here. So I'm just going to write down that's your tab for connecting things here. So again, half a half a pattern. So here's one side of the base. This is a half side of the base. So from here, 
I've got to get some lines put in here to connect all this stuff, right? Because our bottom's square and our top's round, so I've got to connect, do some bend lines. I'm going to do a bend line from there. Remember that first example I showed you? How it looked. So four bend lines to that point. And from this corner, pencil's having a rough day here. Again, if you're bending this in sheet metal, you can see the disadvantage you had if you did this in one big piece. You're going to have a piece and you're going to be bending it, putting it in a break and doing all those bends. So I don't know if I can get all this in one piece, but let's see if I can. Looks like I'm going to squeeze it out of there. And again, I have to make the same bend lines for my piece. I'm going to have to transfer some little marks here through the paper. Again, bend lines. I'm kind of rushing myself through this for everybody's sake, so I could have been a little neater on that, folding that over and tr making my other half of my pattern. But like I hear people say, it is what it is right now. And I did this on AutoCAD, by the way, too, the other day. Again, you have to use a few little different tricks, but the same process is the same. But Anyway, okay, so let's start folding some things over here. Put little bend lines. Now again, if you had some state-of-the-art bender, like a sheet metal brake, I think each one of these turns out to be about 11 and a quarter uh, degrees, just a very slight bend. 11 and a quarter, 11 and a quarter means a, t means a 22 and a half on each thing each section you're bending. If I get inspired, I'll do a uh, same pattern with an offset top. So in other words, it's not symmetrical. The top is offset from the base. That's kind of cool if it comes out. Piece of tape to put it together. See if it came out half of what it was supposed to be. Sometimes I do this and go, whoops, made a big boo-boo somewhere and kind of start over. So, let's see how this is. Okay, so here we are. Get a little side shot here. Square bottom, again, the paper's not totally perfect. Round top. There's your pattern, folks. Thanks for watching.